I put this video together to help demonstrate how I do the posterior incision hamstring harvest when doing an ACL reconstruction most commonly and also how to prepare the graft on the back table for the quadruple loop technique using just the semitendinosus tendon to reconstruct the ACL. Hopefully this will help for practitioners or their assistants who might be prepping during surgery. So here we're looking at a right leg I am first marking out our landmarks with my thumb. You can see I can feel the semitendinosus, which is the thickest tendon there, which will be the center of the incision. I will take the knife through the skin superficially and being careful not to go too deep with the knife, especially in the thinner portion where the tendon is directly underneath. Here you can see after separating the fascia, I can immediately get underneath the tendon and expose it bluntly. I'll pass something to tag the tendon. Here's a Penrose. Free up the tendon a little bit and then immediately one centimeter medial you will always find the gracilis which although I don't expect to use we want to tag it now since it will be difficult to find later once we remove the semitendinosus. So I keep it there as a backup measure. I then take an open-ended tendon stripper, place it around the tendon, and I will run it approximately up into the thigh directed towards the ischium of the pelvis, where of course the origin of the tendon is. I'm keeping tension with my right hand on the penrose so it doesn't bunch up as I run the stripper. And there we have a nice, decent tendon that doesn't look to be amputated. The next part is a real advantage of this approach besides the cosmesis and also being underneath the saphenous nerve which gives it a much better chance of not having nerve pain afterwards. I run my finger up down to the pes to track the course and draw a target that I will aim the clothes stripper toward, pass it, and now I don't have to really pay any attention to the accessory attachments from the gastroc to the tendon when I'm going antegrade, which you usually have to really worry about when you try and harvest from the front of the knee. I can just keep tension with my hand on the one end and push it all the way till I see it tenting the skin in the region of the pes and it pops out. Take a look there. Since we're going to do a quadruple loop, we want to have at least 240 millimeters, which will translate into a 60 millimeter graft, and we have that there. I now have both of my endo buttons loaded on the graft master, and we've looped the graft around to make four strands and snap the ends, sliding the snapped ends toward the femoral button. Here I've made a ridiculously crude drawing, but I think it gets the point across. The yellow is the graft, and you can see we loop it around until there's four strands with the ends meeting near the femoral side. I then stitch those together with a simple whip stitch, tie that off, and then I'll trim any dog ears that are left over at that point. We want to get this cleaned up so it's as smooth as possible for graft passage once we put it into the knee joint. At this point now, this is sort of the critical part, we're going to pass three sutures. We start going inside to outside, pull it through, we'll go over the top of the graft twice, so here once, retrieve it, go over twice, and now I'll go outside to inside. You'll pick the outer one as a smoother one, so that's what's interfacing with the bone tunnels through the outer one and then I'll go retrieve what I want to be the inner one, go through that and come out the top again. Now we will tie this down and this will help to bundle this up, make it nice and snug. The other critical thing here is we don't want to put the suture through the loop from the endo button. So you got to make sure you're clear of that because it'll bind it up when you're trying to pass your sutures. I'll take the other limb here, pass it back through the graft before cutting it just to make sure we bury that knot. 
in the center of the graft. We'll now do the same thing on the femoral side. Two of these together to make sure we capture both of the graft limb ends so those are secured with suture over twice and then outside to inside. Once again, I'm retrieving that inner one to pull it back up into the center of the graft bundle. Pull that through, cinch it nice and snug, tie it in an identical fashion, and again, bury the knot in the middle. We'll speed it up here since this will be the same process as before. And the third and final cerclage suture inside out, over the top twice, outside to inside. I'm finding and retrieving that inside limb. Pull it nice and tight, tie it off. Our next step is going to be trimming any loose ends, make sure it's nice and smooth. Measure your graph, make sure you have at least 60 millimeters and check your diameter with your preferred method and then I tension it typically to about 10 pounds. There might be a little more creep in the system and you want to get that out. I now mark it somewhere around the 50 yard line. Everyone has a different preference. The important thing to note here is once you drill your femoral tunnel you can mark it as shown there if this were a 40 millimeter tunnel from the button down to the suture. So that way when you draw the suture up into the femoral tunnel you can see that mark at your aperture in the joint and you'll know to flip the button and start to tension the graft and draw it into the joint. I hope this was helpful.